someone wants to make it into the top eight. So we've got uh, Caleb Gedimer. This is uh, Andrew Jones. Yeah. Playing for that top eight spot. You know, the top three tables, I think, were looking to ID. The uh, top uh, three tables were looking. I think the third table, um, Finnegan Lynch, was actually playing down to a 29 point. Yep. And that was Joe Rudiger. So he actually has to play it out to try to win because only one 30 point is going to make it in the top eight from what I've been calculating. And I'm Jerry Jallen. This is Adam. And we're going right now, round 14. Yep, get some games coming along very quickly. Uh, are you saying you're now the new human calculator? Yesterday it was Sam Chen, and we were talking about the uh, Szymanski <laughs> yeah. brothers. You oh, say my... you've taken the mantle, Jeremy. No, well, well my uh, math skills is very just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, only seven people above 30. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your math extends literally to the Pokemon top cards. Yeah, is that yeah. what you're telling me? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Anything else? No. Don't ask you to split a check. No. Well, the start here from Andrew is going to be the uh, execute. Not usually where you want to see it. And he'll be going up against the lone Zerua from Caleb. Yeah, this will be a Zorark mirror match. Uh, really just what a lot of players have been seeing this weekend. I mean, when you look at it, we've really not uh, featured too much Zorark today. Um, we kind of skirted around the issue a little bit, uh, but you know it is still going to be a deck in contention at the top. There's no way to avoid that fact. And with that in mind, you know it's time to feature who can pilot it the best and and try and see if there's any variants in the list that yeah. are so essential to to winning that mirror. Like uh, Caleb's executor. You're just ready for blockade, aren't you? Yeah. Um. Well. Okay. Isaiah Williams has won two games off the back of executor. And I just want to see it happen on stream from someone. Yeah, I mean, there are certainly times where, basically, when you have players uh, who, who want to do that, uh, stop those supporters coming down, it's the only way out for a number of players to play a big supporter next turn. So being unable to do that is, is fantastic. Yeah, so here is that Tapu Lele one tag off that Ultra Ball, getting that Bridget, and then another Ultra Ball coming down. Yep, just... Filling up the bench, making sure he's got everything in play uh, that he needs. Gets that Shaman EX as well, so we will see a setup for quite a good amount of cards. Yeah, Andrew Even actually, has that computer search in hand. Yeah, Andrew got a really nice turn one off there. Uh, attaching and, and drawing up with setup. Oh, and there's a Getsis. It could be a good card later on in the game. Uh, Getsis red card? Everyone's yeah, Getsis red card. Everyone loves playing that one. It's been a, been a potent combination, but his bench is now actually uh, full already. Yeah, only uh, having the two Zorua uh, in play. Yeah, I mean, the big thing as well is we saw him draw into the rock rough. Yeah. So until something gets knocked out, he's not actually going to be able to play that. I think wasting a bench space uh, on the execute is something you don't want to do. Obviously, he will have the option to skyfield for it, potentially, um, and then be able to, to really go for it there. And Caleb on his own, he does play that Alolan Muck. Um, such a great utility card against the Zorark mirror matches. Yeah, that's something that people have been have been going for, and I think immediately we see the the variant in that list. Uh, you know, we've yeah. seen we've seen Joe Rudiger's list with this Alolan Muck, and a lot lighter on the execute that's uh, available to him. So I think this could be kind of the matchup of those, those two variants. We haven't seen how many execute Andrew plays exactly, but one on the bench, one in the discard already, uh, indicating a slightly higher count than this list that Joe was talking about earlier with, with just the one. Yeah, so I actually think Caleb's playing the same list as Joe. He's not actually playing the executor. I got a little ahead of myself. A little bit excited yeah. about that. But... But, um, so he's playing that Lycanroc, Zorark, and... It really has an inherently good matchup against Zorak mirror matches, but the real question is, unlike Joe, can he find the energy he needs to take knockouts? Yeah, but a lot of the problems we've seen with Zorak have been to do with energy, and uh, particularly when you any fighting types involved have always come with that kind of energy limitation. Uh, the Buzzwell decks that appear to have all but dropped off in day two. Oh yeah, I, I have not seen. A single one. You know, the Lycan well. rocks in the Zoroark that just haven't been able to uh, to get the fighting energy they need to, to start dealing the damage. Alright, and the propagation trade for that Zoroark. Yeah, look at that. Marking the trade with a, with a little coin there. Uh, one of the few ways 
ways players do it. Some people just count the trades. Other people kind of tap the Zoro. Turn it sideways, yeah. Yeah, not a full 90 degrees to indicate a state's position, just a little 30 or 45. Yeah, like, why is your uh, Zoro asleep on the bench? <laughs> <laughs> so there's that computer search coming on, discarding the egg and the Getsis from his hand. Yeah, uh, looks like he's going to be running the full line of executes. Yeah. Three or four is, is pretty much a full line. And he's looking for a way to get this egg out of the active spot, and he found just the perfect way to do it in Guzma, being able to bring up essentially that rock rough, I would think, and taking a knockout on it. Yeah, that'd be really nice. And uh, that's why, I mean, Caleb has found the fighting energy that he needs for this one. So being able to remove that from play would be really damaging to potential Rockruff players. And then it becomes just Zoroark on Zoroark, to be honest. And at that point, it's who's further ahead in the Zoroark matchup. Well, in this instance, potentially it's going to be going to be Andrew, because he's already got one of the GXs in play. He's got one ready to go on the bench. And there's the Riotus beating, taking the knockout on that Rockruff. And Caleb now has to cobble together some stuff. Granted, it's only a second turn. Andrew got a pretty good first two turns. Granted, yeah. he only got one Zora can play. Yeah, I mean, could he's, be better. He's got the limited bench space. I will say something to look at if you're Caleb. Uh, if you look at how many execute are over on Andrew's side of the field, you know, you already see two in the discard, um, one uh, on the bench, and being able there to there is two in the discard. Uh, I believe he discarded the second one with the oh, he pulled it out and then put it back in. So yeah. just the one. Uh, my apologies. Um, but at the same time, uh, being able to stop that engine with the potential Lowland Muck would be really nice. Oh, and wow, here, we, Caleb actually rescues Stretchers for the Rock Rough, commits the fighting energy, kind of foregoing uh, drawing Double Colorless and Zorark off this uh, Colorus for nine. Good Colorus. Yeah, quality Colorus. Col quality Colorus. <laughs> uh, probably looking for, for something to really help him go. Didn't pull anything he wanted to play off of it, though. That's not a... Uh, Number-wise, a good call. Oh, he's asking about the hand, I think. It's still, still going. Uh. But the fact is, uh, your bench is already full with that Sudo Widow's uh, roadblock. Oh, yeah. So you only have those two Zorua. One of them's active that's probably going to get oh, knocked okay. out. I misspoke. I believed he was uh, passing over with the, with the hand gesture. Yeah. But uh, no, he will, will, of course, play more. He trades away an Ultra Ball. Um, oh, draws that Pokemon communication, though. Yep, he marks his trade. Does he have the Pokemon to use it? Maybe not. He's mulling it over. Oh, there oh, it is. There. Look, something in the back. Shaman going in. Good, good communication. And again, he could think uh, either Zorgix or the Alolan Muck. Alolan Muck would allow him to bench a fifth Pokemon. Yeah. Takes a Lola Muck, so that's really what I think he needed here to, to turn off Roadblock and uh, the potential to propagate. And wow, he just has double communication, double Pokemon in his hand. Uh, he's getting everything he needs right now. Yeah, communicating uh, to get another Zoroark ready to go. Uh, oh, yeah, so, bench the uh, evolve the Lola Muck first. Uh, yeah, there's the Lola Muck. Roadblock no longer a concern. Uh, and there's the red card as well. Ooh. That's why he was asking about the hand yeah. size. Wants to know if it's going to be a worthwhile red card, which uh, turns out it is. Uh, just being able to, to lower the hand size is always nice. And uh, he did get that replacement Zorua just for this one that will be knocked out next turn. Yep, I mean, that's good. He's unlocked oh, the roadblock. but looking at that hand from Andrew Jones, the perfect four cards, essentially. Battle Compressor versus Seeker is always nice to see off the top. Yeah, what you want off the four, and then he pulls. He the, also uh, has the Hex Maniac as well. Yeah, he's gonna be able to uh, to deal with this for uh, for quite some time. So he has quite a few options. He can Battle Compressor versus Seeker for maybe like a Chorus. Uh, he can even versus Seeker for Guzma, and uh, attach the Float Stone for your treat and take the knockout on the Rock Rock again. Yep. Or even just take the knockout with a Hex Maniac. Uh, he really has a lot of options. Yeah, and I think finding the option that pays off the most for him is going to be essential. Well, trading into a Zorak GX double colorless is pretty good. It's decent. It's like a Colorus for 10. So I rate things <laughs> on. So I'm going to start rating things on Yelp in yeah. Colorus, Colorus quality. Uh, my burger was like a Colorus for 4. Uh, <laughs> but the fries, I tell you, they were a Colorus for 11. Oof. And those are pretty good fries. 
five stars is old hat. Who's who's really going for five stars and you can rate it in Colrus? Just you wait, it'll be a new scale. Slight delay here. The either that or the world's slowest shuffling. <laughs> there it is, caught up a little bit. Oh, we do see some jiggery pokery there. Yeah, so there's the Guzma actually bringing up that Alolan muck. Kind of valuing his pseudo widow roadblock and his executes. Yeah, he wants that execute uh, mechanic back on. Um, really big here, and of course, roadblock would be nice again. Um, but but now it depends if Caleb actually has a way to get Lycanroc in play, Dangerous Rogue, or Claw Slash maybe. But yeah, he has to discard that Pokemon. Yeah, as soon as that Alola Muck leaves the field. Which is a weird interaction because. Uh, under Hex Maniac, you actually promote your Pokemon first, and then Roadblock goes into effect because Hex Maniac ends at the end of the turn. Right. But knocking out the Lolan Muck, the Lolan Muck leaves play before the turn has ended. Before the turn's ended, and then Pseudo Widow is active before you even bring up a Pokemon. Right. Such a niche piece of information, but it does mean that this bench is now pretty slim pickings. Um, for, for Caleb, just going to be Zoroarks. You do have to wonder, is he missing a Lycanroc somewhere? Because there it is. There's Lycanroc. Bring up the Zorak with the Choice Band. Double colorless. Ooh. Claw Slash will be able to take the knockout. 220 damage. Yeah, I think this Lycanroc's about to be huge. Uh, just being able to Claw Slash uh, over and over again. Deal with these Zoroarks. Um, get himself caught up in the game. Well, so the thing is right here, uh, Lycanroc's very good. But it's a lot of commitment. Three energy instead of just the regular double colorless. So with Andrew being able to use abilities, if he's able to get the choice band Skyfield full bench, take the knockout on the Lycanroc and kind of leave Caleb with just a few Zoroarks in play. Yeah, we are going to see uh, some more, more kind of shuffling up from Caleb. Uh, yeah, Ultra another. Ball getting the Lolan Grimer out. Yeah, looking at the, the Alolan Grimer wants that Alolan Muck back. Um, but his counts, you know, already seen one in the discard. And unfortunately, he does not have bench space to play it. Well, he's holding on to it, I think. Uh, oh, Hexmaniac, yeah. yeah. All right, so that was a great turn. Red card, Hexmaniac. Play down Alolan Grimer, take the knockout with Claw Slash. And then he can just, grow. when he has to move it back, you can just lift up the Shaman. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, really easy decision for him to make there. Yes. And those cards do not look very helpful for Andrew right now. Well, one of them is completely useless. It's an ace roller. And then uh, the other two, you know, Zorak GXs that are also completely useless. Yeah, they've already been... There's no Zoruas on the bench. Uh, the one in the back uh, could also be pretty much done for. So looks like Andrew's just going to decide to give up. Let's execute. Cross the Bridget. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that Bridget's going to be uh, okay now because he can trade it. No, you can't trade it, Hex Maniac. Oh, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah, that's that's a big problem. He's literally stuck then. <laughs> he could bridge it for Zora. And then evolve it next turn. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to a couple of the other players earlier, and they said that there was some nasty games going on where they literally just got locked with Hex Maniac over and over again, mm -hmm. and they weren't permitted to play the game. So Caleb's showing off two ways he can lock this out, uh, and then... Kind of just force Andrew into a full hand. He does play the Bridget, and it's going to be for one Pokemon. Opting for Zeru. I, I give this Bridget like a chorus for two. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Bridget is poor value when you only get one Pokemon <laughs> off it. It's not even like a big basic that can go attacking immediately either. Yeah. It's a kind of baby basic that you need to evolve. I mean, if there's any disruption in Caleb's hand this following turn... Uh, All right, and there's the Sudo Widow being active thanks to Hex Maniac wearing off, and Caleb chooses to discard that Shaman EX, which is such a liability on the bench sometimes. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be there anymore. After it's set up, it's done its job, and then it's able to just leave the field with a, with no repercussions really. And now, it, depending on what Caleb wants to do, he could have the option for maybe Hex Maniac again, or even a Guzma to take out that Zorark on the bench. He did trade into a Versus Seeker. I mean, that gives him the choice, doesn't it? He can start hitting things with the Guzma, uh, or he can just start hitting things, uh, locking out Andrew's ability to play the game, uh, kind of with, with one of these other options. 
Looks like Guzma's going to be the big one here to uh, deal with those Zoroarks. Yep, Guzma bringing up that Zorak GX. Retreat back into that Lycan Rock and Claw Slash again, proving that weakness does matter. Yeah, I mean, it hits such a convenient number. 110 off the Claw Slash yeah. to 220, uh, making those Zoroarks easy pickings. Uh, and now, I mean, Andrew's bench is looking so, so lightweight. Yeah, he has just a bunch of utility Pokemon on the bench. Only his lone Zorark in the active. Wonder tags for that Colrus. And remember, there's no Skyfield in play. There's no double Colorless on that Zorark. There's no choice band. He needs a lot of stuff to get going. Yeah, I mean, he's going to need so many things. Um, just just struggling, I think, a little bit to, to get it set up. I mean, if he needs to help, he does have access, of course, to his propagations this turn. So that would be <laughs> helpful. <laughs> like three versus Seekers in his hand. Oh. Acerola, Puzzle Time, Field Blower, and then a few Pokemon that's just not useful. Skyfield. That's the Battle one. Compressor. Okay, okay. Mm, cooking, cooking a little bit more. Could keep going. Um... And yeah, yep. he doesn't have it. No double colorless there. Yeah, I think I think after seeing the Skyfield, he contemplated the idea of, of continuing to play and, and see where he could end up. But in the end, it just wasn't going to be worth yeah. it for him. Uh, that was Lycanroc actually doing work when you draw energy. Well, if you look at it, though he had the choice when the Alolan Muck was on the field to take out the Alolan Muck. Yeah. But then he just decided not to. He just decided to leave that, or he decided to leave Lycanroc. Yeah. That was a problem, because then it quickly became like a Rock GX, and then took knockouts. And maybe we see that going forward, that he's going to try to value the Rock Ruffs a little bit more. He did it first time. First time he saw Rock Ruff, he went for it. Second time he left it alone and got punished for it. So maybe that decision the first time was the correct call. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, remember, winner of this game goes to 31 match points and makes it into top eight. Uh, going down the actual people that were in top eight. I know Alex Hill, of course, yep. is in. Azul is also in. Yep. Uh, Keon. And uh, Finnegan Lynch is actually the one playing down to Joe Rudiger. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a big match. Um, thought that that one play off yeah. elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe tends to lose on stream a little bit. so. Yeah, we've already put him on today, so we thought... Give him a rest. That match actually looks like it's done. I do see Finnegan uh, in my line of sight here. Really? Yeah, so who knows what happened hmm. over in that one. In our action, though, uh, where we try and keep up, we do have Andrew Jones versus Caleb Gedimer. Uh, and Caleb, uh, arguably a slightly better start. Uh, Shaman in the active isn't where you want it, um, but at least he gets the Tapu Lele to begin the turn. Yeah, searching for that Bridget getting... Zora and a rock rough of his own. I mean, it's not a bad thing to get. We saw what rock rough can do when it becomes a uh, when it becomes the Lycan rock. Yeah. And there was Zora rocks on Caleb's side, uh, so why not go for it? Look at his hand; it's actually pretty good. He has that turn one red card, Ooh, uh, just essentially forcing Caleb to start with what two less cards. Yeah. Yeah, he played one, one down for the initial seven. Um, don't know if it was a good hand or if it was a terrible hand. He could still draw in something really nice, but does limit his options. So really nice play there um, from, from Andrew to, to make life hard for Caleb in this one. Yeah, and now action is back on Caleb. These four cards need to be pretty good. Because even if he does get like an out to the Bridget, he still would need a supporter for next turn as well. Yeah, he, he needs to, to put himself in a good position. Um, it's looking like he's arranging a few cards for maybe an Ultra Ball or Computer Search. And yeah, yeah. Computer Search. This is going to be one of those long chains, I think, where he grabs all the things he needs and kind of plays... Just throws it out on the... <laughs> yeah, just plays like eight cards on a turn just to see uh, exactly what he can do with it all. That Lone Zerua, though, is going to need some help. That's really important. Yeah, I, I, it has to be... I, I don't know. It depends on its hand, because if he doesn't have that supporter, then it's kind of a moot point. But there is the Bridget. 
Yep, grab it, Bridget. Making sure he can get some basics down, just so he doesn't Double lose. Rock Ruff Zora? Or no? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Double Zorua Rock Ruff. But I think this is just going to be a pass, too, for Caleb. He could go for the Paralyzing Gaze. Yeah, I mean, why not? Give it a go. I want to see it. Go all in. Commit that double colorless to Azurua. Or what would be great is if he has the actual fighting energy as well. Yeah, you could get that down. Um, which rock rough is it? Oh, it's the corner one. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah, there's the fighting energy. So action's back on Andrew. We see versus Seeker, a lichen rock of his own. So could summon that. Uh, does does he have rough. a way to retreat the Shaman out of the active, or any like Zora, Zoroarks to actually chain some trades? Well, he's committed his energy for the turn to one of the Zoruas. Um, he's going to Chorus. Chorus is seven. Not too shabby. But again, he's still trying to find a few cards. Uh, There's a lot that he wants to go for in this. He could, so. he could potentially draw seven Zorark GXs, right? Uh, That's your yes. reasoning? Yes. <laughs> Every card is a potential Zoroark GX. Until, of course, you've, you've run out. All right, Skyfield, Choice Band, Battle Compressor, Egg, Egg, Guzma. Stand-in Zorark. Okay, you can at least take the knockout right now. Yeah, Stand-in Zorark was the big last card. There's the compressor, so... Get some more eggs in there. You do see the... Uh, the remaining two execute, so confirmation he is playing that full four yeah. in his list, uh, for those who had any doubts. Um, and they should all be gone. They should all be out of his way and, and in the discard. But you do want to be a little careful. Um, it's better than it's on the bench, but then if you get caught by the Alolan Muck again, yeah. they're just going to be sat and, and unable to play. And it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to discard just another egg, because they're both in his hand. And he doesn't actually have Zorark GX to Use trade to discard them as well. Yeah, he's just gonna have to to play it the old-fashioned way. He is taking the stand in. Yeah, so this is the one way he could take the knockout. Mind Jack, dealing a hundred damage. But you would really want to take the knockout on the Rock Rough. So yeah. it's kind of unfortunate. But uh, Zora, Zora is just a good consolation prize as well. Oh yeah, I mean. A prize early on certainly helps. Oh, uh, makes his end, end off the top. Makes that end more valuable for Caleb because he actually gets one extra card. Yeah. So nice, nice top deck. Not that he had much control about it, but still, nice top deck. Nice top deck. <laughs> Approved of this. I believe the nice now is, uh, I believe the consensus is it's spelt with an O. Noise. 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 Don't do that to your opponents at League Challenges or Cups. It's really <laughs> rude and annoying. <laughs> Do you know that from personal experience? A hundred percent, yes. <laughs> Just like, uh, uh, knockout with Tapu Bulu. Noise. No. I play other decks. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have played another deck once. <laughs> once, in Polion. I haven't played that yet. You've oh. revealed my tag. <laughs> okay, um, revealing of text. There's two Zorak GX coming down for Caleb and trades as well. Uh, there's the Ultra Ball most likely getting Lycanroc. Or even just Shaman to try to draw more. Yeah, draw more, including the Lycan Rock. Let's draw all the cards. Why not? I mean, leave your deck with about four cards in it. You've got four turns yeah. to win. You'll be all right. There's uh, the double colors. He really is going all in. Where's the Lycan Rock? It's not there. Oh! <laughs> no, now is not the time for this. There's the it Ultra is. Ball Lycan Rock. Yeah, that's... uh. That's what he needed, just to be able to start swinging for things, taking out these Zoroarks, these Zoruas. Uh, be nice and easy now he's got all the energy committed. Looks like Caleb's going to just try and uh, ride it out on the Lycanroc again. It worked last game, why not this game? Yeah, ooh, before he does that though, he's made Andrew spread his cards out. There may be a potential red card coming here. Oh. Oh, I, th I think he was thinking for Bloodthirsty Eyes. Uh, this Mind Jack isn't really doing much. The only way you can actually one-hit my Lycanroc is with a Riotous Beating, so why not take out your only out to a Zorak GX? Yeah, I mean, really smart play. The one thing he has to be careful with here, um, although it wouldn't be the biggest loss, 
is he has to be careful about benching things because of this dangerous rogue GX. Yeah. So the more he puts down, I mean, he puts down another one, and the Tapu Lele is gone. If he fills the bench up, then then anything is gone. Um, so that'll be a kind of sticky situation, I think, for Andrew. He doesn't want to be going crazy with the benching. Uh, he just wants to keep it limited, keep that damage from Dangerous Rogue down at 150. Yeah, and here we see the power of Lycanroc GX in this mirror match. Just dealing insane amounts of damage to these weak Zoroarks. Looks like he's going to be uh, grabbing another Zerua. Dangerous Rogue now able to do 200 damage. It's, a little, it's pretty good. At, at that point, though, like he does need, of course, to, to get set up with his Zoroarks. Yeah. He needs to have those in play. But the Dangerous Rogue is used to remove something that basically isn't Zoroark. Um, and getting two prizes off a Tapu Lele that's left free to take would be lovely. So his option here is really just to stand in with Zoroark, Mind Jack for 100, kind of set up a knockout with either a Tapu Lele or just another Zoroark next turn. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he's not able to like follow it up with like a Hex Maniac or a Red Card or something like that. Because he's really trying to set up so this gets his, these seven cards, or not gets, uh, Colors, these seven cards are really going to be important to him. Yeah, I mean, that's what he needs. He does grab a Tapu Lele, Skyfield, double colorless. Uh, so I believe Hex Maniac in that, Ultra Ball, and another Execute. So what Ultra I Ball here is pretty good. So uh, Ultra Ball, get another Zorua, get it in play. Allow Dangerous Rogue to do 250 damage. Well, it's already knocking out everything anyway. <laughs> It really depends, I think, if Caleb decides to use Dangerous Rogue to take out the Tapu Lele. Yeah. I mean, if he stands in, of course, yeah, it makes his decision a little bit easier. But, uh... You know, he still needs to be finding energy. I like the idea of stand in to, uh... find Jack and then bring Tapu Lele up to close it out with the Double Colorless. And Tapu Lele is kind of able to... maybe, you know, depending on if Caleb can explode for one of those turns, uh, cause, cause a much bigger problem. Oh. Oh, I was actually mistaken. He might have Hex Maniac last turn, Caleb. Yep. So, Sandin wasn't available. So, Energy Drive here, kind of sacrificing the two prizes from Dangerous Rogue. Yeah, I mean. But that's also if he chooses to attack with it. You could even retreat into a Zorark and Riotus beating if he draws the right cards. Yeah, it doesn't look like a play he's too worried about, though. I mean, again, if he takes these two, he'll be down to three prizes to. To Caleb, uh, to Andrew's five. Yeah. And I think that's a lead he'd feel pretty comfortable taking into it, especially considering, you know, he's got two ready to go Zoroark. He's got, you know, options available to him. We do see him pull over the GX token. Is he going for it? Will he? Won't he? The classic love story of one man and his GX token. <laughs> uh, he's gonna, gonna trade. Yeah, this whole Zoroark mirror match is essentially. Reminiscent of a bunch of different mirror matches that we've had in the Pokemon TCG in recent years. Going all the way back to like even Reshiram Typhlosion, one of my favorite decks where it's just knockout after knockout and whoever wish that knockout will lose the game just because everything happens so fast and you guys are so consistent for setting up. Then it goes on to a deck like Night March where it's kind of the same thing. Right. And then now you have the sort deck where there's a little bit more moving pieces, but you're essentially going to get a knockout every turn. And when you don't, like when you try to do this two-hit game with Tapu Lele, uh, you're really on the back foot. Yeah, I mean, the big thing here we're seeing is... Uh, we do see the Skyfield come out from Caleb, so it looks like with this Colrus for uh, a solid eight, decent, decent. Um, especially a pre-Skyfield one. Decent, decent. Decent. Um, he could just be setting up for those big Riotous beatings later in the game. Uh, putting Double a Double Colorless is going to be one of them. Getting there, getting there. And I think we're just going to see a Dangerous Rogue GX. Yeah, I mean, taking the two prizes would be great, especially if you can drag more Pokemon out of those prizes to put on the Skyfield size bench. And there we yep. go. Dangerous Rogue flipping over the GX marker. 200 damage. I think that's a pretty good play, to be honest. It's just, you're putting yourself so far ahead in the prizes. Um, that you really kind of force Andrew to hurry up a little bit with his play. Uh, Andrew does manage to get the Zoroark GX of his own in, which is definitely going to help out. Yeah, this is also uh, 
with Caleb at three prizes, this Mind Jack Zork is actually a liability. Kind of liability, yeah. Yeah, and it's so easy to knock out. Um, even with the Zoroark, you don't need to. You don't need to really go for it at that point. Uh, like, sure, play your pseudo widow. I still have five Pokemon to play, one hundred damage. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, at that point, uh, the Zoroark is just able to clean house. Yeah. I think it'd be good for Andrew to actually get the pseudo widow in play. He's this. eyeing up that N with that Wonder Tag. Yeah, with the prize advantage so heavily in, in Caleb's favor, you know, or just, I mean, at least two prizes ahead, it does seem like a pretty good value play there uh, to be able to, to keep on some valuable resources in his hand. I don't want the cards in his hand is the Execute, um, but also just punish the fact that Caleb just drew the two prizes. So they're in his hand waiting to see what they are. Uh, he may have something that can really cause a problem. All right, N off that Wonder Tag. And it's unfortunate because in this kind of mirror match where you want to go Hex Maniac, red card your opponent, and take a knockout, when you're this far behind on board and in the prizes, it feels better doing N, but when you end your opponent to three, they're still going to trade, draw four. Yeah, I mean, he still has access to, to two trades. Um, in the same vein, I will say that, you know, Caleb doesn't have access to the Egg Engine. So his trades do actually kind of cost him something. Yeah. But at the same time, he's still able to trade uh, more than Andrew in, in any given turn. So he's not as punished at all. Actually ends up bringing himself to the same number of cards. All right. There's the double colas coming down on the Zorak GX. Drawn off that trade Andrew just did. And here we see the Riot is beating for the knockout. 100 damage. Just getting it exactly. If only... Uh, there was the extra 10 health on the Lycanroc, along with this Zoroark having 210, so 200 only on Lycanroc there. You just see the promotion of the Zoroark GX, the one that's ready to go with a double colorless energy. Um, but he's still got a little bit of work to do to get the one-hit knockouts here. It looks like he Caleb is eyeing that Pokemon communication. Yep, get more basics out. He could. I think I also see a Versus Seeker in his hand as well. Yep, he's going to put the Muck in the... Uh, Back in there, kind of giving up on that play, I think, right now, and turning that stage one, which won't take up an extra bench space, into the stage two. Um, he still needs to get so very close, though. Uh, to be able to get the knockout, even if he finds the choice fan, he, he needs to fill up. He could even go for another Zorak GX here, but Shaman is looking like the play, yeah. being able to set up and just draw a brand new hand and still have room for maybe a Guzma or a Hex Maniac as well. Yeah, I mean, dra drawing into more Pokemon, giving yourself more options to find those cards that you need. It's going to start the trades. Trade number one. This card of fighting you don't need. Well, yeah. I can rock all you do this business. Took three prizes. You're proud yeah, of it. Yeah, he's probably not going to try setting up another, another rock craft. He does. There's Caleb's one copy of Egg as well. Oh, and the red card. Oof. So uh, Caleb punishing the, the draw of the two prizes in his own way, in a way that doesn't affect himself either. Uh, must be nice to, to be able to see that one come to fruition. Must be nice. Nice. But uh, yeah, he's just letting him draw up. Uh, actually encouraging him to draw up, so <laughs> maybe... Wow. Um, two pair, Zorak GX and Versus Seeker. So I don't know where that ranks against like, uh, anything else. That's not as good as Double Puzzle. <laughs> no. Definitely not as good as Double Puzzle. Double Puzzle is best when you rip it off a trade. Um, and uh, here is the Colrus for 9. Yep. Noise. <laughs> uh, but he, I mean, he needs to get his basic Pokemon out right now. To He needs a Skyfield as well. Yeah, I mean, he needs to find that um, before even making that play. I mean, in the same vein, if he doesn't get that, he can just start exchanging Riotous Beatings. Uh, and he'll kind of lead by going first on that one yeah. and be in, in the better position, I think. But looking from Caleb's hand, don't really see too much. So he needs Skyfield, three Pokemon, and a Choice Band. That's pretty hard to ask. Yeah, even off four cards. Uh, nine. I mean, that would, nine cards, but you know he needs four cards yeah. from the nine. Uh, just a little under... All of them. His deck's still pretty chunky as well. It's not like he's taking 9 from 11 and just needs to hit them, you know? Double colors on the bench. Zorak GX. 
Setting up to be able to, to play, I think, without it. I think if he had the Skyfield, he'd play it. Or maybe he'd hold it until he has all the Pokemon ready for it as well. Because uh, now they're just exchanging two hits. In, in the flip side, though, he may be hesitating on the Skyfield because he doesn't want Andrew to be able to turn around and do the same to him. Knowing about the Execute and the Discard means, hey, it's a lot easier for him to be able to yeah. do that. Especially because he just Pokemon communicated away the Alolan Muck. Yeah, definitely opting for the extra draw with Shaman over locking the abilities of basic Pokemon. Andrew now kind of really at a disadvantage. Uh, his hand not really offering much. Not Double versus Seeker gets us and two Zorak GX with no Zora in play and just a heavily damaged Zorak GX in the active and the stand in on the bench. Yep, at least he has the access, though, to at least Riotus beating in return. He does hit a Skyfield of his own off this first trade. Uh, maybe looking to make that play. Still going to be fishing for it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Caleb's also been playing around beautifully Mind Jack as an attack from the Zorak on the bench. Just because when these Zorak decks go for the big knockout with Riotus beating, they fill their bench with eight Pokemon. And then Zork was like, "Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just gonna take a knockout right now. I don't even yeah. need a big bench." Yeah. And we actually see that here with Guzma up the Shaman EX. Yeah, I like this play a lot from Andrew here. Basically, being able to find an easy way to grab to grab two prizes. Yeah. The only thing that might hurt him a little bit is. He doesn't really have much comeback potential from maybe like an N, just because that Zora GX is his only one. Yeah, I mean, the, the two options here, I think, okay, either N him down to one and uh, see what you can do with that. Um, you do see the play from Andrew here is to start spreading it out, uh, taking it, execute, putting it on the bench, and the mind jack for the knockout, putting him down to just one prize remaining. Yeah, uh, Andrew's really trying to turn the tides here in this match right now. Down a game and kind of been down on board, but Mindjack has taken quite a few prizes for him. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, forgetting just how good Mindjack can be. Uh, the numbers it can hit really quickly. Yeah, he's actually uh, talking with a lot of people who chose to play Zorak variants today. They were very hyped on the foul play Zorak and kind of threw the stand in Mind Jack Zorak by the wayside. Because, like, well, foul play can copy a GX attack when I don't even use GX attacks. And then it can also just copy Riot as beating and I have a full bench. Yeah. But one thing that Mind Jack does is it allows you to not fully commit your stuff and still take these big knockouts. Right, and you think if Caleb had one, that would be the time to, to pull it out and show it, but clearly foregoing that in his list. Uh, it does look like it's, it's going to be curtains here for that remaining. Uh, well, here's the red card. Yep, getting rid of those two prizes he just pulled away as well. Kind of limiting Andrew's options. Remember, he had <laughs> the hand of double versus Seeker, so he had the versus Seeker for another Guzma next turn for game. Yeah, the one thing actually that I think um, Caleb's going to have to watch out for is Ooh, what he decides to knock out. Um, because if he gets caught short here, uh, you know, if he goes through it on the, the standard Zoroark, and then there's a Rockcroft available for Andrew uh, to evolve into Lycanroc, yeah, he's, he's going to be able to just grab up that Shaman and knock it out again. Yeah. So he uh, just needs to be careful. Th this red card, though, is really dampering Andrew's hopes of stealing this game to execute Skyfield and a Puzzle of Time in his hand. Oh lord, that's not what you want at all. He will have access uh, to a trade, uh, so he may be able to play the single puzzle. Yeah, but then if he plays the single puzzle and just looks at like a puzzle in the top where it could have uh, been game, that is heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, you put it, put it third. <laughs> you forego it until the next turn. I'm not saying it's a premium play, but it's an option. Yeah, it's only a colors for like six, maybe. Yeah. About that. Maybe a five. I give it a five. But if it if it wins you the game, then it's a colorist for sixteen. Yeah. Like it's the lowest you ever colorist for. Um one. That's a sad that's a sad time. Yeah. How did yeah. it make you feel? Uh well actually I have colors for zero, but it was against Waylord. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That's very fair. 
anyway, it's still still Caleb's turn. Uh, still kind of piecing this turn together, seeing which way he wants to place his knockouts. Uh, getting the, the lock one back lock up. Versus Seeker. The executes will be stuck in the discard. Oh, here's the N. That's nasty. That's... It's good, but... It's almost mean at this point. Andrew's hand isn't really that functional either. He has the choice, you know. Yeah. It, oh, hello. Salmon's orc of his own. Yeah, we hadn't seen that one pop out. But it's kind of a liability here too, just because it's so easy to get knocked out by an opposing It's too late drawer. for it, really. Yeah, yeah especially because he's already down to just one prize remaining. And there's the end. I'm putting Andrew down to one, Caleb down to three. No basic Pokemon can use abilities. There's no Skyfield in play. And Andrew's just going to have one trade to try and win this game. Yep, I mean, I like it. Um, I think Caleb as well opened up the door with a Rockruff of his own. Uh, being he, able you, to... see, you see him shaking, uh, warming up his hands, getting ready for this hot top deck. Yeah, the spicy top deck. We actually see they had a judge shuffle, just so no funny business here. Right. One card off the end. Uh, he's going to lose his standing Zoroark here. Uh, decided he's just going to go for it with the uh, Zoroark. Oh, there's the Lycan Rock for the game. Oh, wow. Oh. oh. Wow. That's what we were saying. Those Rock Crops were sat there. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. what they're there for. To drop a Bloodthirsty Eyes. I don't know if it was the one he top decked or the one he pulled off the end. But oh my lord. Game three. Didn't even need a trade. Not even trade. Just, but then we hadn't seen one from, from him yeah, all game. Yeah, I, I think he just plays the 1-1. One, one. It had to be in there somewhere. So. Had to be in there somewhere. And we're going to a game three. The final round of Swiss. Winner of this game makes top eight. Yeah, that's, this is a big one. And I think both players... Uh, what happens if they tie? Squeaky bum time. <laughs> it's a real phrase. Look it up. Don't. Um, but it's, I, I think both players are going for it. And the big thing here again... Who plays Lycanroc best? Yeah. It's been a tale of two Lycanrocs. First of all, we had the one swinging with Claw Slash, taking knockouts willy-nilly. And then we had the one literally just there for, for Bloodthirsty Eyes. Done. Game over. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, and if you actually go and target down those Rock Ruffs as well. Uh, we saw Andrew could have done that early on, but missed the Guzma. And, okay, anything you can do, I can do better. Caleb, turn one, red cards, Andrew... And he started to execute as well. Yeah, this is uh, not ideal. He's going to push him into a position. Pokemon communication. Could he get Tapu Lele Getsis? Oh, uh, no. I don't think he plays Getsis. He plays the same list as Joe. Yeah, I mean, this this gets tense. Ooh, that hand, though, is terrible. Oh, at least he has a... Is that a basic? It looks like a yeah, Zoro it's a Zoro. Back. But, but double puzzle is great. But on turn one, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. He might actually have to play one of the puzzles in his hand to look at the top three. Right, at least he can get a basic down, though. At least he won't get donked. There's some respite in that. Yeah. Uh, the problem is for him, though, is, you know, even if he gets just the one lone Zerua down, then he's going to be in a position where he's basically stuck. Uh, if, for some reason, he can, uh, when it comes back to Caleb and he can get something like the Guzma uh, to, to get that played out, then, yeah, he could just leave him with Execute and just play every Pokemon other than Execute. Oof. It's got the Ultra Ball. Gonna yeah, go Tapu Lele. Meanwhile, Caleb's still just playing everything in his hand. There's oh the Bridget for Zerua, Zerua. The late Bridget. Like he basically played everything first and then he's like, oh yeah, I, I could still play a supporter. Let's Lele Bridget for double Zora Rock Ruff. That's crazy. I mean he's now set up nice and comfortably. Uh, got that your, full your turn. Yeah, you have go. fun. Hex Maniac the top card. Oh, Not what you're looking for. Not at all. Double puzzle. Uh, At least he could red card him. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's forced into it. And, and he, he passes. actually chooses not to play the puzzle. And double oh, puzzle here. Oh, Caleb. He's going to grab the Ultra Ball. He's showing off at this point. And the point. communication. You know he can go looking for a Guzma like this. Well, yeah, he could put oh. communication to get a Lycan Rock. Oh, no, he I can't think, Lycan Rock. That's right. I think he used the... Uh, Taking the knockout right is speeding. Andrew oh. has one turn. Oh, it's a double colorless. That's, That's not game. 
I mean, he has to go for it. Yeah. He's got a paralyzing. No, oh, it's, it's not the paralyzing it's Ram. one. It's Ram. Yeah, it's the Ram one. Oh, I was thinking of the one on Caleb's side. That's mm. such a galling game. Uh, we were excited for game three, and we didn't get much of it. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Well, 